Hello everyone, this is Genius Yoshi, and today we're gonna have some fun with the new card from Rise of Floodborne, Mufasa. So, Mufasa the Betray Leader is a 3 3 quest for 2 for 5 substats, subpar. But whenever he's banished, we look at the top card of our deck, and if it's character, bam, comes in play for free. Okay, so we want to make use of Musa Mufasa's ability as much as possible, but we're gonna cheat the roulette. And how are we gonna do that? Well, there's two cards in Amethyst, namely Ursula's Cauldron, that allows us to look at the top cards of our deck and kind of filter through them. So it allows us to look at the top two and put the one we want back on top, which is pretty nice to find that big threat. Then there's Merlin the Squirrel, which whenever he enters the battlefield or when a reliefs play allows us to look at the top card of our deck making sure that it's appropriately overpowered to drop with Mufasa. Otherwise, we just send it to the bottom. So using Merlin and four, four copies of Merlin, as well as two copies of Ursula's Cauldron, we'll be able to kind of guide what Mufasa is going to hit. Now, I don't want too many copies of Ursula's Cauldron, <coughs> because if we hit too many copies, well... We can control our top deck, but we don't have anything on the battlefield, and it's uninkable, so we can't throw to the ink pile our extra copies. So what else do we want to play? Well, we want to play big inkable threats, and as many of them as we can. But before, if we know that that's what we're going to be doing, then ideally we'd like to have some ramp. So thankfully, Amber has access to good old Lantern, which gives us one more ink for characters. And we now have access to Doc, which is a character that makes our next character cost less. So using Doc as well as Lantern, hopefully we can reach that Mufasa 5 ink a little earlier and help us play these other big characters that we're going to be playing. All right, so now we've got Ramp, got Mufasa. We have abilities to kind of control our top deck. What else do we want? Big threats. Let's go and add as many as we can. Elsa, fantastic big threat. She's non-inkable, unfortunately. And we do need to be careful not to include too many non-inkable big cards because we're going to be stuck with a ton of those and we won't be able to ink anything or play anything and we'll just lose the game. So we're going to favor inkables. Hades, not good enough. Ursula, not good enough. Feel free to let me know in the comments below whether you think I should be including some Ursulas. I don't really like her that much. So I'm going to go after Sitch, Carefree Surfer, Fig Stats, Inkable. Madam Min still has the downside of having to forcing me to sacrifice two characters, which I don't really want. I'm not going to flood the board with small characters. King Louie, not my favorite card, but he's a top. And if, if I get a King Louie for free, I'm going to take it. 3-8, self-heal whenever a character is banished. Let's see what he can do. Facility is also interesting, but uninkable, so we're gonna skip him. Isma can act as a removal spell. That does give our opponent some cards, but still a removal spell. Mickey Mouse friendly face. Perfect opportunity to play this card. We want big inkable characters. We want ramp. Big Mickey gives us a bit of both, which is fantastic. So you definitely want some big Mickey action right there. Then we look at the five drops. Well, five drops. We have Fairy Godmother, which I really like. Also, if we get to activate her ability, we can send Mufasa to do a challenge, take out something, trigger Mufasa, and Mufa get Mufasa back into our hand and just tag team with the top card of our deck, which can be pretty solid. Okay. So now we're in the five drops. So let let's take a look at what we have have a lot of top end and a little bit of early game. We're very vulnerable to aggressive questing decks, especially on the play. So we need some we need a bit more of one, two, three drop type of cards to keep our opponent in check. Now one of my favorite options for that is Mr. Monkey King, the Mysterious Sage Rafiki. With it is 3-3 three, three rush, takes out Simba, takes out early questers and the opponent doesn't see it coming. Then we look for 
something else that we'd like. Well, we do like these big drops. So I like having some queens over here. Because if we go back to look at our five drops, well, Stitch, well, we're not going to be playing a lot of small characters. So let's skip on Stitch. In five, there's the queen or the queen. Maximus is a fine option. A queen can kind of control combats pretty well. Madame Min, well, this isn't the deck for her. And that's pretty much all there is. So the queen is almost next in line in terms of best next five drop. And with her shift two on top of a small queen and even just threatening to do so, to do so it's going to keep the opponent on their toes. That brings us to 54 out of 60. Okay, what are we missing? Well, we're in amber and we don't have a four drop yet. So you guessed it, Rapunzel. Because, I mean, if I'm not playing Rapunzel, I'm probably doing something wrong. And if I'm playing amber. And we need two more cards. Our two drops, we have 10 options. Don't really need a, a one drop. In terms of an inkable, we have 4, 5, 6, 10, 14 with the Elsas. That's about where I want to be. So that's fine. So I want an inkable, probably a 3 drop. And just to get us over the hump, I like to include a pair of Maleficents, which will wrap up our list. <coughs> so there we have it the Wheel of Mufasa. Mufasa just cheating his own ability using a magical cauldron ruled by ursula who's now on a break because i don't really want to play her and let's see how will this work in works in action with some games coming right up let's see what the circle of life brings us this game with a stitch a mufasa a queen king louis a pair of rapunzels and an elsa that's a lot of very expensive cards i do like the mufasa we'll keep maybe a queen and a rapunzel case we top deck into a smaller queen okay that's better going second and we find a Rafiki okay so now in decent business Louis gonna get inked and the opponent didn't have a turn on so we're gonna be able to establish some defense with our squirrel so the opponent goes Cinderella the warrior lady of the hour. Well, her bigger form, the stout hearted one. What well, is our opponent this card? Mickey Mouse, wayward sorcerer. So the opponent's probably playing brooms. Trying out that new broom. All right. I don't think I want to telegraph that I have a Rapunzel, so I'm gonna ink a queen and land a cauldron. Cauldron shows us that we only have big stuff coming in next turn. We'll take the Mickey. One falls up with a Maleficent. And turn passes back to us. Alright. So now that we have a Cauldron, we don't really need the Squirrel. So Merlin into the ink pool as Rapunzel will be good enough to take care of Cinderella. Hmm. Let's take a queen next turn. It's not really going to matter. It's probably the card going to our ink pool. Let the storm rage on. Sung goodbye, Rafiki. You will be missed by me. I want to heal you with our Rapunzel. Ooh, Merlin. That's an interesting drop. Gonna ink our queen. Check our top decks. Is it too late for Lantern? No, Lantern's fine. Gonna play her. Rapunzel on the empty board and pass the turn back. We do need some some kind of board presence here. Rapunzel, Rapunzel gives us some time and gives us something to heal to draw some extra cards. 
as the opponent's probably going to start bouncing that Maleficent. Here comes Arthur. Magic Broom. Okay, Brooms and Bounces. Oh, I get it. Merlin and the, the Brooms bouncing back is an interesting way to play it. But is it good enough for our Mufasa? Brooms come in. Storm rages on. All right, then turn passes back to us. So here I want to resolve my Mufasa. So Mickey's going to the ink pool. Gonna cast our Mufasa. I'll leave a queen on top of the deck. And I guess we quest with Rapunzel. Make sure our opponent exerts. They don't really have very good combat stats. They have to kind of all chip into Rapunzel and sacrifice a whole bunch of ink to do so. A whole bunch of lore, I mean. Ooh, Fairy Godmother. That's a dangerous card. They don't really have a good way to remove that. Unless their opponent doesn't take out Mufasa and we find Ismo or Elsa off of the top of our deck with the cauldron. Archer bounces back Maleficent. And there's a lot of questing going on from our opponent. Find a queen. Looking at the cauldron. Find a Rapunzel. We have to take out Arthur. And these characters become very, very damaging. I think the best I have right now is Maleficent off the top. Unless I heal. Yeah, unless I play my own copy to draw the card and hope for a better top deck. Yeah, let's go for that. So Mufasa is going to go after Arthur. Taking it out. And that magic broom has two power, so we can draw two off of it. I should have played the lantern. Did I ink this turn? Find another Mufasa. I didn't ink. So I can ink Rapunzel, play a lantern, and be set up for at least an Elsa next turn. Unfortunately, now we're at the mercy of the Mufasa roulette. We don't know what's on the top of the deck because they were both bad cards. So we dodged two not so goodies. See what we find, because Fairy Godmother is going to get that broom to bounce back. Get some extra questing potential ready for our opponent. Magic Broom trades with a full Rapunzel, fully healed Rapunzel. Bounces back to the hand, and now Merlin's going to quest for three, I think. Unless the opponent has some kind of mana min shenanigans going on to bounce more characters. Okay, a Cinderella Stout Heart. That actually works well in our favor. Because we have an Elsa. Oh, because the character was banished. Whenever a character is banished, return that card to your hand. Whenever a character is returned to your hand from play. I guess it was returned to your hand from banishment. Okay. So here we start with Ursula's cauldron. You can find a Rafiki or a Stitch. Stitch seems like a good pickup here. Gonna ink a queen. Get to eight. Play Elsa first.
freeze these two characters. Now we go to combat. Funzel is going to hit Fairy Godmother, and I want to train Mufasa. So I get my big stitch and draw two carrots. Boom! All planned. And there we go. Card advantage at its finest. Elsta still doing her thing and being awesome, keeping the opponent in check. Like Gandalf once said, when all hope fades, look to the east at sunset and you might see an Elsa and she's going to save you and make everything go well. Next turn, ideally, if we can go Rafiki Mufasa, just set up another one of these wonderful turns, it'd be great. But we might have to just drop another big Elsa, freeze Cinderella, and that Merlin again. Or we can Isma one away. All right, so Stitch pretty much has to take out Merlin. And if we play another Elsa, opponent still has this big Cinderella stout heart here. You can also go Rafiki. Rafiki takes, oh no, Merlin has a lot of hit points. So we need two hits on Merlin. Four and a one, maybe. But I do need to start questing at some point. Maybe I just need to throw away Cinderella using Isma, give our opponent a few cards. I might need another Mufasa trigger. I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna ink one of Mufasa's. Check what's coming. So for eight, I think I want the Isma. So an Isma coming. I need to take out this Smurlin, then opponent can cast for three, four, five, maybe six, seven, going to 18. I think that's fine somewhat. Well, I played a Rafiki, so let's go with that challenge. Let's start questing with characters of our own. And that'll be our turn. I'm going to play the Mufasa roulette one, roulette one more time. Magic Broom goes to the ink. That Maleficent is going to get bounced. Oh, okay, grab your sword. Taking out Rafiki as well as Rapunzel. Ooh, and Madam Min comes in. I guess the opponent isn't afraid of bouncing some characters. Merlin quests for three. And Room comes in. Now the opponent has the Madam Min. Big bad dragon. Strong and intimidating card that we will have to deal with. 5-7, evasive, lots of bad stuff for us. Let's see what's on the top of our deck. We have a Fairy Godmother. That's pretty decent. I think I want Fairy Godmother. So I'm going to Isma here. Because I want to get that Madam in out of the way. You may draw two cards in her stead. Uh, Stitch will fight. Ufasa will take it out and trade for our planned fairy godmother. Then Elsa can keep on questing. Love that Mufasa ability. Just so fun to, to just keep on dropping five drops or higher off of the, the deck triggers. Phone's now on 10 ink, 
15 more with magic brooms and nothing else. And we quest for 9, so we can't even quest for victory. Grab your sword. How many is left? A lot. Oh, it needs another one. Which would completely wipe out our board. That would be bad. Let the storm rage on. Opponent's tired of seeing that Elsa. So Elsa goes out. Which is unfortunate. We find a small queen. Let's see what's on top. Hmm. I wonder what I want to keep. Alright, so Fairy Godmother quests. Which means that I can get back that stitch. Take out brooms. Get Stitch back, thanks to Fairy Godmother's awesome ability. Play Stitch, draw two cards. Find another Lantern. Don't really need the extra Stitch. I can use more ink. You can always use more ink. Play a Lantern, use a Lantern, drop a Queen, and quest a bit more. The queen's really there mostly for Fairy Godmother's ability. So I can send her as a five-powered attacker that will bounce back to my hand if she if she loses the combat. And with also I can force combats. Opponent's trying to go wide with Maleficent's drawing a ton of cards. Opponent doesn't have anything to deal with our board. And we win the game off of multiple plan Mufasa triggers. Uh, that Ursula Cauldron really paying dividends, allowing us to really decide what we want to play to take out our opponent's pretty nice position. Let's see what we can do in our Lion King. Merlin, Louis, a Cauldron, a Lantern, Small Queen, and the Pyramisma is going first. Seems okay. I have a plethora of two drops. Yeah, I think that's fine as is. Going first, I'm going to skip the queen. Yeah. Uh, actually, let, let's ink an Isma. Let's just keep it as is. I don't think I want to play the queen, so I am going to pass the turn here. On the draw, I would have played the queen. On inks to Rapunzel. Plays a stitch. Okay. That is not overly promising. Probably an Amber Steel Songs type of deck. That would be my guess. So here, I don't think there's an advantage in playing the Lantern right away, so we might as well try to control our draw using Ursula's Cauldron. When we find a big queen, let's keep that on top, since we have the small queen in hand. Cauldron, cauldron. Brewing some bubbly stuff. Jeez. Yeah, there's not much in Ursula's cauldron right now. I guess it's more brewing some voice type stuff. Bring some deck lists with her new voice. Who knows? That's what evil sor sorceresses like to do. Let's ink our Merlin and go... Yeah, Inca Merlin, let's go Lantern into Small Queen. Actually, let's see what's on top. A Small Queen in the Dock. Next turn, I really want to play a 5 drop, so I'm just going to top deck the Queen, try and make my deck better by inking her. Just playing the vanilla character for now. Threatening a shift. Which I don't really intend on doing right away. I intend on playing the fairy godmother. Now the opponent decides that the storm was rage on. But they paid the full price, so 
tree ink for the song to take out my small queen i'm happy with that trade it's less pressure all right here i'm going to ink the queen look at the top cards finding a rapunzel seems good rapunzel is always a nice one and go go fairy godmother Now we're getting into the big draws. Strong characters. Their opponent doesn't have too much pressure and just three lore on the battlefield. So the Sarah position is good. Looking into the full six card hand of our opponent. I still think it's fine. Opponent goes after their own lantern. Cinderella, a little too late to the party. The storm already raged on. Simba goes to quest. And so does Stitch. All right. So here's perfect opportunity to draw some cards off of Rapunzel. I'll use the, the cauldron afterwards. All right, so Fairy Godmother. Bring out one of these swords and make it to good use. And we're going to heal her back to draw two cards. Ooh, and we find our first Mufasa. That's good. Do I want to keep the Isma or the Queen? I think I prefer the Isma in this particular situation. Cauldron finds. Another Mufasa. We are a Mufasa wheel deck after all. Opponent inks the world's greatest criminal. Perhaps they're sword hard casted, that's good for us. Hmm. Alright, well we can resolve Mufasa. Which is always nice. Let's make sure that we get something good. Big stitch would be nice if the opponent does take out our character. But for now, we're just going to quest with the rest of the squad. Uh, we can keep the Isma. It's tempting to ink something. Come on, opponent, put the big threat on the battlefield. Opponent grabs her sword, takes out her fairy godmother. Come on, take out her, take out her lion king, our betrayed leader. Stitch decides to go after Rapunzel. All right, well. Let's see what's on top of our deck. We have a Rapunzel. Rapunzel is perfect because we can use Simba to take out. Hmm. We can use Rafiki. Wait, is there a way to kill off my Simba and heal something off of Rapunzel? No, because Mufasa just dies in the process. Well, that doesn't quite work. All right. Well, let's go with option number two. Double Simba for double success. Double Mufasa, I mean. Do you want to ink something? Yeah, this is fine. What's your opponent going to do? Wipe our board? They grab, your, grab her, uh, their sword, Mufasa dies, we'll get Rapunzel, heal the second Mufasa, and still be in good shape. And if they both live, well, there's always an next turn to sacrifice them. Rapunzel healing little stitch to draw a card come 
Come on, exert something. Bodyguard? No. Hmm. All right, well, we'll do this the boring way. Let's go Rapunzel, heal my Lion King, draw some new cards, find Elsa Queen. We have no, no more uses for that Queen. We're going to check the top of our deck. Mickey Mouse is one we want to keep there. And we can quest with the Mufasas safely, knowing that Mickey's going to come to the rescue if our opponent takes out our characters. And we had enough ink for Rafiki, so... Two, buy two lion, get a monkey for free, I think is what's happening here. But our opponent is, isn't applying much pressure. Just a couple of grab your swords, which didn't do too well. Ah, big Cinderella coming in. Shifted. That'll turn the tide. Well, that's why we have Isma, so we can take out big bad threats like this Cinderella you can also use Elsa I guess just keeping Cinderella exerted Mufasa goes down but just like we planned we find a big Mickey I don't think I want to give the cards to the opponent so Elsa is oh yeah with a second Elsa to boot well, Mickey can give us the ink we need to go with Elsa. And Elsa will let it all go. Let's look what's coming next. Letter Mickey or an Isma. If you can take out one of my Mufasas, surprise Isma seems pretty nice. Rafiki can take out Stitch and we'll use the, our other characters to quest since there are the two questers and we'll pass the turn back. It's nice knowing exactly what's going to come down with Mufasa thanks to Ursula's Cauldron. Grab your sword. Hits a little bit but not nearly enough. The opponent can't do anything and we take the win. Let's see if we can do more cool stuff with Mufasa. We have a dock, a bunch of big stuff. Keep the Mufasa, we'll keep one dock, a Rapunzel and a Queen and King Louis is going to go to the ink pile. Okay, Lantern. Lantern is nice. Pick up. Louis gets inked and we'll pass the turn. Lantern, just a nice little ramping item. Pretty solid card. Opponent is playing some emerald stuff. Inks a Cheshire Cat. So we'll ink that stitch we just top decked. Lantern go. Amber ramp. Some real stuff going on. Wrong dwarf. Where's the where is Doc? There it is. King Louise just love seeing some time into the ink pile. And we'll resolve a doc a doc and pass the turn. As the opponent now has a Flynn Rider. Ooh, ooh, Prince John. That's a troublesome card. Opponents making us discard Queen. Which means the opponent will get to draw a card. Which means our time is very limited here. I think I need to ink something. 
Rapunzel is a nice card draw spell, though. I'm afraid of the opponent casting I have you forgotten me. I kind of want a fairy godmother in play. So I think I have to ink Rapunzel. I don't want to leave Doc vulnerable. So I'm going to go like this. Pass the turn back. Maybe Fairy Godmother with whatever I top deck is going to be good enough to keep us in the game. Depends how much removal the opponent has. The opponent inks a smash, or the opponent is playing some steel removal. Elsa will not see much play. So the opponent draws two. Take out one of our cards. All right, we find a queen. So now we can drop our entire hand to the battlefield. Questing with dog gives us enough ink to play the queen. Do I want to quest the fairy godmother? I don't think so. I think I just take out Flynn. I have nothing left to discard. Your Prince John is no longer a threat. And I have a board position. Unfortunately, don't have much control over my top decks. And grab your swords. If our opponent has a few more of those, we can be into some serious trouble. But Prince John just cannot quest. Although the challenge to Fairy Godmother would kind of hurt. Challenges Doc for some reason. I don't get why. All right, well, we're going to play the lantern. We're going to quest because that's all we can do. And quest for four we shall. Opponent sitting with six cards in hand to our zero. And we can cast stuff for six ink. Grab your sword's triggers. Ufasa is banished and we find a little squirrel. Not the best. If we can keep a big Mickey on top, Mickey's fine. It's a heavy quester, which is mostly what we're looking for. Did I just send that to the bottom? Well, we're, we got lucky and top deck to Mufasa. I'll have to read the UI next time that thing props up. Grab your sword again. All right. Rule and trigger. Top of deck or bottom. I don't really want Isma. So I'll send her to the bottom. That was the, the downside of that move. Because I don't want to shuffle Mufasa in my deck to draw two cards. It seems counterproductive. And there was no you may on Isma. When you play this character, shuffle chosen character into that player's deck. Opponent plays Lucifer. Uh, I'm going to have to discard that Elsa. Quite unfortunate. Big Bad Thug Cat. Coming after our hand, and we draw one of the worst top decks in our deck with the queen. That's okay. We're at 11, 11 lore. And we still have a Mufasa in play, and a lot of very live top decks. Tinkerbell will take out Mufasa. Let's spin the wheel. Find a Mickey. Not really a threat, but it's a big quester. And we top deck another Mufasa. It's the circle of life. One Mufasa goes down, another one just takes its place. Queen can trade with Lucifer. And Mickey's going to quest. As we pass the turn back to our opponent. We can play without a hand. We've got good top decks for days. 
Prince John again. Tinkerbell does her stuff. Her tink. Pings back our Mufasa. Find Maleficent. Maleficent will draw. A big stitch. Now I'll send that to the ink pile. In case we find another one. Let's keep on questing. 16. What do we find off the top? Mufasa Roulette. Do not disappoint us now. And Maleficent goes out. We find a big stitch. Genie on job. Balances stitch back. Let the opponents out of stuff to make us discard it. We find Elsa. So we're going to ink that stitch. And go for the big eight. Elsa, freeze them. A little bit stressful. Now that we're at eight ink, we can keep on playing whatever we have. Now the opponent can quest for nine next turn. And Tinkerbell can't deal with Doc as well as Elsa. So the opponent needs some kind of ping damage spell or bounce spell. This card will not help you, my opponent. That will. That is going to take out our threats. Tinkerbell is going to have to get sacrificed to Elsa and something else is going to have to bite the dust. Probably Captain Hook. So hook to Elsa, Tinkerbell to Elsa takes out both of our threats. Opponent can quest for five, six. Lose for quest for two. So six plus an eight next turn. Hmm. I think we just lost the game. We can top deck Rafiki. But I think we just lost. Fairy Godmother. Nice pickup. But doesn't stop the onslaught at 19 too. just so close yet so far uh, we couldn't quite make it the Mufasa just kept on rolling for us but just wasn't quite enough I hope that you've enjoyed this video we've seen Mufasa do some crazy stuff in the games just cycling to other big threats, uh, having access to the cauldron lets us choose what we want. Just great games. The deck is a ton of fun to play, and I'd encourage you to try it out on Pixelborn. Don't forget to give a thumbs up to the video before you move on to the next video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And le let me know in the comments below what you think about this deck and whether you think Mufasa is a lot of fun or anti-fun because of the randomness. I think it's actually a pretty fun card. But let me know in the comments below. And then I hope that you'll have a great day. And I'll see you next time.